In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up the cloak for vellum simulation. But first, I would like to discuss some of the possible sim setups that I ran through during my practice for this video. What you're looking at here is my practice file that I used to set up uh, to prepare for this course. And you can see that I actually went through and did a single-sided mesh setup for this cloak, simulated it, was happy with the results, it was very cloth-like, and um, yeah, I was completely happy with this. The problem that arose was returning the simulation back to the renderable mesh. I planned on using a standard point deform node to transfer the simulation from the single-sided mesh to the dual-sided mesh. The problem is the dual-sided mesh is pretty thick and there were a lot of overlapping points and so points on the single-sided mesh would get closer to points on the other sided mesh causing shearing. You could see along this edge right here there's a lot of points that come really close to points on the other side so it was hard to designate which points on the two-sided mesh belong to which points on the single-sided mesh. I came up with a solution and I will demonstrate that later and I will show it. However, during this whole process I wondered to myself what if I just decided to simulate the renderable geometry and just use some simple struts, maybe some cloth and some struts, and just pin it to the shoulders and just take a look at the results there. And so here's the results of that with just the default settings. And you can see that it actually behaves very well. It looks like cloth, it feels like cloth, it feels like a, a, like a wool or um, uh, cottony sort of cloak. And I like the wrinkles that I'm getting here. It actually looks pretty cool. Like there's the having two sides on it provides you some of these interesting wrinkles that that I think. Now we do have some problems here uh, where it's penetrating the sword, but we can fix that along the way. So I have decided that I'm going to set up the cloak using this method, but I will include this file along with the others. We can see that there's a lot of thickness between the single-sided mesh and the final mesh here. So especially at this area right up in here. So it made more sense for me to just use a uh, the renderable geometry. The triangle size was about the same anyway. So in any event, I will include this file with the cloak set up with the single-sided mesh so you can take a look at it. And in a future video, I will actually discuss how I set up color islands uh, for this character so that we could do point deform. Just a quick look at that. I just want to show you. So each one of these represents a separate island that will get blown away uh, during, a, during the point deform and it'll be these long strips and each one will only deform the geometry underneath. Uh, but that's a different video, so we'll look at that later. In any event, let's go ahead and start setting up the cloak. Before we begin, let's go ahead and swap our Source Olympics from version 23 to version 27, the two I included. If you've been following along, up until now you've been using version 23 which has intentional penetrations of the sword into the leg etc but we've gotten past that now and we solved all those problems so let's go ahead and change it to version 27 27 also takes care of some issues where I've lifted up the shirt collar up a little higher here it wasn't uh, above so things are a little little more defined that way it wouldn't fall down uh, initial sim so it would layer nicely okay let's set up the cloak I've copied over our default stack and I removed a bunch of stuff. I kept it, I'm keeping it next to the belts here, so I just pushed everything over a little bit. So what we have here is our geometry that's coming in, just our cloak geometry, we're converting it. And then I put in a brand new attribute paint that has nothing in it, so we'll go ahead and paint an attribute here in a minute. But before we do that, what we need to do is make sure this thing has triangles. So I'm gonna add a divide node. The quads are great, but the triangles keep their shape a lot better and they don't shear. They, you don't have to use such a high bend strength to keep everything there. So, And I have it on manual right now so that everything wouldn't update. So I'm going to go ahead and auto update now. And we're going to visualize that. So now we have very evenly spaced triangles, which is exactly what we want. After that, it'll go into our notes here. We're going to go ahead and change these. I haven't updated these at all. So this will be not the undershirt, but we'll just call this cloak. Okay. And let's go ahead and give it a color. Now let's go back up to our attribute node, our paint attribute node, and let's add that attribute for animation. Okay, we're just going to paint a little bit on the shoulders and sleeves here. Make sure you have symmetry on. Paint a little, on the, paint a little bit past here, past the elbow into the forearm, just to give a little bit of a, a hint as to where you want the cloth to go with this animation constraint or this pin to target constraint. And we'll smooth that out a little bit here. 
Well, we're going to paint the hood a little bit just to kind of hold it down. That way it's not flopping everywhere. Uh, this will just keep it kind of behind the head. Okay, that'll be good for our initial test. So let's go ahead and add some nodes down here. We'll start with a cloth node. We'll start with a configure cloth, vellum configure cloth. Drop that down and we'll follow that with some struts. And then we'll follow that with a vellum constraint for pin to target. As always on these pin to targets, the very first thing I recommend you do so you don't forget is do soft, soft match animation, soft. Then for the geometry, switch it from primitives to points and do our expression of at animation greater than 0.001. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some values. So the default weight and edge length scale are fine. Let's go down to damping. Damping needed it to feel a little heavier. That actually helps, it moves a little slower. Uh, and as far as stretch, we can leave that in the defaults. Let's go down to bend now. The bend is, is crucial here. We'll go make it a little, we're gonna put struts, so we wanna reduce the strength here of our bend and let the struts. And we definitely wanna take care of some damping here as well. Now, this thing comes with wrinkles already embedded in it. Um, so one thing you can do is you can change the rest angle. With a rest angle of one, it'll try and go back to this wrinkled state as if this is a default state. If you want it to slightly unfurl a little bit in a more natural way, do 0 0.8. If you go all the way to zero, it'll completely unfold, which it, which will go back to that state. It'll try and stay completely unfolded. It looks unnatural. So I just want it to unfurl just a little bit to look a bit more natural. 0.8 seemed to be a good value. Okay, let's move on to the struts. So for the struts, Let's start at the very top. The maximum length, I don't want struts going from one side of the cloak to the other, so I'm going to put a maximum length of 0 0.01, and I am going to use the normal to locate future struts. So I'm going to go to wireframe here so I can see inside. There's not that many struts right now, so let's go ahead and increase the jitter. Jitter, again, is, if you look at the previous videos, explains sort of like a cone angle from one point searching across in a cone, as you raise the value, the cone widens and it finds more available points. That's why we're creating new springs. So we'll go to like 1.2 and then we'll do four strings, or four springs per point. And that's what I found looked, initially looked pretty good. Okay, for ray offset, I put a 0 0.036 was a interesting value that I felt worked really well in combination with constraints per point and the direction jitter. Now let's talk about the stiffness here. It's not really seen, so let's go to our stretch. We don't need this to be super infinite stretch. I, I want it to be nice and loose so it doesn't cause some crazy oscillation. So we'll start somewhere near the middle. And this is a point I found that worked pretty good in my testing. And we also want to damp it. So if there is a lot of energy in there, it kind of just dissipates a little bit. So it doesn't kind of flop around a lot like they're wearing a rubber sheet. And let's go to the pin constraint, the last one. Again, I do not like the default of super strong values. So I started in the center here and I started working my way up. And this is the value I came up with it was pretty good. And that was scaled by an attribute known as animation, the one we use for everything. So, all right, so this is our default setup. Let's go ahead and hook this up so later we can apply it into the combined setup. And let's take a look at some of these settings here for the solver. Five substeps, that looks good. We'll just start with that just to see what we get. And this looks all good. So I'm gonna change the name of this vellum IO to cloak. And let's go ahead and run our first sim and see what we get. So let's unload that, not in here. So let's go ahead and simulate this and we'll see what results we get. We'll come back. Okay, let's take a look at our first results here. It's not looking too bad. I forgot to put the ground plane as a collision object, so I'm going to go ahead and add that in the next round. It does look like that it's kind of penetrating the sword here at the very beginning and maybe getting pinned in there. Let me explain. So in the very first frames here, you can kind of see this little edge right here right there is getting kind of stuck inside the sword so i'll add a little i'll add a little uh, soft transform to fix that and i'll add the collision body down and this time i'm going to add um i'm going to go with 10 or 15 sub steps just to see if i can get the quality because our, our default sub steps right now are at about 20 on the combined just to make sure everything's working 
I just don't want to wait around that long to see the results uh, in case something is exploding or whatever. So I'll go up to 15 and fix this little area right here. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So we'll go up and right up here, right by animation maybe, or right before divide, we will go ahead and add a soft transform. Soft transform. We'll zoom in here and you can see here we have slight little penetration here. Yep. So what we'll do is we'll pick a point. We can just pick a single point, just hit one, and then we will move it in the, let's see here, looks like the positive x axis. So we'll go down here and just slowly, whoa, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's see what our uh, radius does here. So we want to pull out just a little bit here, make it look even. I don't want to go too far. I like to keep my, my fixes localized there so it doesn't start in a penetrated state and then maybe that's a little too far out so we'll lower it back to get there so just a little bit we just need to keep it from being from penetrating initially at the first frame okay let's go ahead and send this off select our solver and we'll set it to 15 sub steps leave everything else the same we won't change constraint iterations at this time and we'll call it version 2 and we'll send it off Version 2 of the sim is back. There are some problems with it. Overall, I like the way the cloth feels. I just don't like the way it's draping and the way it penetrates the fingers here at the end as the character stands back up. You can see the hands are there and it's happening on the other side as well. So it's either an anim fix to keep the fists closed longer until the character stands up completely or we figure out a way to drape these over and get this thing draping the way we want it to. I'm going to keep iterating on that. In the meantime, I'm going to start working on a setup for the buttons that I would like to show. We are going, we are not going to sim these buttons because they will snag on everything. And while I was doing this, they would snag in the little cracks between the fingers here. Then I point deformed them to the final cloak simulation, and they actually looked really good. And you couldn't tell that they were not simulated. They're rigid objects anyway, and they're attached to the claw. So as long as they're not visually penetrating another piece of cloth, uh, it makes sense. Let's go ahead and set this up in the next video.